Let's talk a little bit about Digital Guard Dog and Moto Gadget. And uh, this may be a standalone video, uh, so if it is, welcome to Built Not Bought by Bruce. And uh, for those of you who subscribe, welcome back. Thanks for being here. Karen suggested this needed to be a separate video. Uh, she, she thought it was complicated enough or, or detailed enough that it should be a separate video. So it may come out that way or it may be part of a wiring video, we'll see. Anyway, um, I, I want to talk about this setup because I think it's fairly unique. I did a lot of Googling, a lot of YouTube searching. I couldn't find anybody who had documented this kind of setup and it did take me a while to to work through it and figure it out and and maybe that's just because I'm slow I don't know uh, but I thought I would share it with you if anybody's looking at doing this same thing uh, hopefully some of this information will save you some time and help you think about this a little bit better um, start with something very basic which for me is always a bit of a challenge being a, an older guy, you know, most of the motorcycles and cars that I've worked on, it's pretty simple. You have a battery, you have the vehicle chassis is grounded and body, you know, the vehicle's grounded, and you have your plus 12. So you run plus 12 to a switch, make the switch, turn it on, you run out of the switch to whatever you're trying to drive pretty simple system. The other side of whatever you're trying to drive, be it a motor, uh, lights, whatever, uh, is grounded to complete the circuit. So the switch has power running through it. With the age of electronics and uh, Moto Gadget's technology here, which by the way, I, I think is fantastic. This stuff's rock solid very impressed with the uh, the quality and the engineering here but <clears throat> with with this technology there's a difference so all of these inputs and hopefully you'll be able to see the book here I'll, I'll see if I can zoom in a bit or whatever for you um, all of these inputs take a ground so what's happening is when you ground the input and I'm going to talk in very basic terms. I have a little bit of electronics background, not a whole bunch. I'm going to talk in very basic terms. And if I'm not quite accurate, please forgive me. If you want to correct me, that's okay too. But when you ground the input, you're effectively turning on a transistor or an electronic switch, if you will. Um, I guess you could even compare it to a relay. You're turning on that transistor inside this box which then completes a circuit and allows an output. Your input, your power for all of your outputs comes in on on this side and it doesn't show it in that diagram. Here we are. So your battery power is here and essentially this is feeding all the power here. This side has very little power. The input side uh, what are we talking? I saw it in here somewhere. It's it's like 0.1 milliamp or something. It's small, small current. The cool thing about just grounding the input to turn the circuit on and having that low, low power is you can now run much lighter wire than, than we used to when we were running 12 volts everywhere. That's kind of cool. Um, I was I went with 20 gauge. I think looking at the Moto Gadget uh, specifications, and of course, these guys being from Europe and Germany specifically, I, I believe, they don't talk in terms of wire gauge. They talk cross section of wire, and there's charts that you can Google that will tell you what cross section compares to what gauge of wire. But using one of those uh, those charts. It looks to me like you could probably get away with 24, 26 gauge wire. That's getting pretty light. My, my fear with going with a super light wire like that was that vibration, you know, what would the tendency be for that wire to break 
eventually, uh, which would be a bad thing. 20 gauge, I thought was a pretty good compromise of uh, light wire, but with enough enough body, uh, you know, enough wire that it shouldn't uh, shouldn't suffer from from vibration and break easily. It should be pretty solid in there. As well, everything I'm doing, uh, I'm soldering everything, I'm heat shrinking everything to minimize any kind of flex. I'm not using crimps, I'm, I'm soldering everything. Uh, so, 20 gauge wire should be just fine. 20 gauge wire is a whole bunch lighter than 16 or 14 gauge and a lot easier to work with. All the controls, all the handlebar controls, all the switches there with the exception of one that I'll talk about in a second, all those switches are now 20 gauge wire coming back to the electrical box to the moto gadget. Uh, it's just ground. Beautiful thing about ground is if you have a problem, if a wire breaks, if something gets hot and, and bears the insulation off of there, if the wire touches ground, it's going to activate the circuit on the moto gadget, but that's the worst thing that's going to happen. So, okay, your high beam comes on, let's say, uh, but you don't have a dead short. So it's kind of a safety feature, it's kind of nice. So this whole idea of grounding the inputs is really cool. But it also means that a guy has to think differently. Because you have to consider what it is you're trying to do there. So going over to the digital guard dog, and and I will, I will tell you uh, my, my perception of the instruction manuals. Moto Gadget's instruction manual, very technical. Well written, very technical, very detailed with cross section of wire, amps, all that kind of stuff. The Digital Guard Dog one, I found to be a lot more basic. Uh, it, um, I don't know, it, it, it left a lot of detail out and uh, I, I believe this is a good product. I'm going to find out, but everything I've seen so far makes me think it's quality. Uh, the engineering seems to be real good and everything. Support line was there when I needed them. I called uh, and there was no issue. But even then, the, the support guys didn't, you know, they didn't tell me, well, this, this circuit will draw this many amps or, you know, you need this kind of cross section or gauge of wire. It was kind of, yeah, well, there's not much current there. Uh, okay, that's that's a relative term. So I, I, I'm a little disappointed on the digital guard dog side that there isn't more of that kind of information. I think for the most part this product is intended for somebody with a stock bike who just wants to get rid of the ignition switch and have a, a FOB, an RFID system, um, which is cool, that's great. In my case, I'm wiring right from square one. The other thing is these guys, I don't think ever considered what was gonna happen uh, in terms of their product being used with something like a Moto Gadget. So their instructions were never written for, for that kind of thing. However, I went through this and, and figured it out and I'm gonna share this with you because like I say, it may be useful to you down the road. Um, what I had to look at here, on the input side, uh, we have grounds. So there is, a, uh, there is an input, I believe, for... Uh, yes, so a kill switch or a run start, uh, run stop, sorry, run stop switch. So there is an input for that, which if you were only using the Moto Gadget, you would run a ground wire to the switch, you would run from the switch to the Moto Gadget, and when you closed the switch, you would ground the input. The problem here with the Digital Guard Dog is they're looking to have power from the run stop switch to make this work. Uh, if you can see this, this diagram, the digital guard dog for 
ease of understanding purposes, basically divided in two. There is an input side. So on the input side, what you're really doing is you're the first off it needs the fob. And when it gets the signal from the fob, that enables the input side of, of the digital guard dog. The second thing it's looking to produce an output is it's looking for a plus, plus 12 voltage from the run stop switch. So when, when the switch is put in the run position, that takes 12 volts through to the circuit on the input side of the digital guard dog and that effectively enables the output side it takes the the plus 12 supply and directs it out to the coil and or ignition so just to recap digital guard dog input side output side to satisfy the input you have to have 12 volts from the run stop switch and you have to have the fob within proximity to the unit. If we go back to the Moto Gadget for a minute, and this one, this one stumped me for a while. So, as I said, on the inputs, everything is looking for a ground. That's great. Except for one pin from what I can tell, and I, and I haven't wired the bike yet, so I'll follow up with you and make sure that I'm correct on this, but it appears I am. On the, there's one input that is called ignition lock. And the lock input requires 12 volts. The, the problem I have with that, the way this is worded, is if you tell me it's a lock input and it needs 12 volts, my understanding of that is I need 12 volts to lock the bike. That's the way I was thinking of it. So I thought, that's kind of silly. Why, why would you have to power this thing with 12 volts? And, and if the 12 volts went away, the bike, it's suddenly unlocked. It's actually 12 volts to enable the, the Moto Gadget. Knowing that, I don't think I would have called that input a lock. I think I would have called that input enable, activate, something like that, which would have told me that when I put 12 volts to that, I'm, I'm turning on the Moto Gadget. So that was, that was a little understanding thing that I had to get past. And that's something that if I was to, to offer any criticism to Moto Gadget, I would say that's an odd name for, for what you're trying to do there. Now, when you consider that they have an M-Lock RFID unit, um, that gets into a whole nother thing, and, and maybe this input makes sense at that point because they're thinking that you're going to feed it from the M-Lock. The M-Lock is, is very, very similar to the digital guard dog. From what I understand, I don't have one, and I haven't tried to... Uh, to set one up yet, but I did watch Revival Cycles had a video on it. I watched their video and the, the, problem, the problem that the guy from Revival Cycles has with the Moto Gadget product and the problem I have with it is it's, it's, a, it's really not like a fob, it's like a, a coin or something. And there's a reader that has to be mounted on the motorcycle that ties into here. And you actually have to put this coin or, or um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Anyway, the, this little fob, you have to take it right over by the reader. You have to pass it by the reader. Well, the whole reason for me to have a fob in my pocket uh, and use an RFID system is so that I don't have to take it out. I don't have to fumble for it with my gloves on or whatever, whatever. If you have to take this thing out of your pocket to put, in, put it in front of a reader, I don't see it that that's a huge advantage over just putting a, a key in a switch. So, I, you know, the, the usability, the, the, um, the, the process, uh, I don't know. I'm not that sold on it. 
However, with the M lock, when you activate it, then it would supply 12 volts. So I guess the terminology makes sense that way. So looking at this input that needs 12 volts, I thought, well, I, I can't get, you know, I can't get 12 volts. How am I going to do this? I thought about, you know, 12 volts to the run stop switch, which is ultimately what you have to do. But I thought, okay, so how does that work? How do I turn this on? If I turn on the moto gadget, will the bike start? We need the RFID, the digital guard dog. And here's what I eventually came up with that I believe is the solution. So on the output side of the digital guard dog, you have 12 volts battery supply coming in. When all of the conditions are met, two conditions, the, the fob and the 12 volts from the run stop switch on the input side, then you get power on the accessory output of the digital guard dog. There's my 12 volts. That accessory wire goes to the lock input on the moto gadget, which turns it on. So now when I hit my run stop switch, turn it to run, I have to, unlike all the other controls on the handlebars, which are all using ground now, I have to have a 12 volt supply to that switch and the switched side of that is going to the digital guard dog. Then the digital guard dog, when the fob is, is in proximity, turns on the output which puts 12 volts on the Moto Gadget lock terminal, activating the Moto Gadget and bringing everything to life. Now, my start, uh, all the things that are done through the Moto Gadget are going to work. So, I checked that out with, uh, with the guys at uh, Digital Guard Dog. They said, yep, that's the way that'll work. You're understanding it correctly. Um, it should work and uh, Moto Gadget from watching Revival Cycles videos I believe I understand the Moto Gadget correctly too. I should tell you too that I am not going to use the ignition output from the Moto Gadget uh, that's just too complicated with what I'm doing and not really necessary. My ignition output to the coil and to my, my Dyna ignition is going to be from the digital guard dog and and there's a wire for that it's simple uh, something else i'm doing just so you know on the input to the moto gadget i am putting in a separate fuse uh, a 30 amp fuse so this goes to the positive side of my battery i've got a fuse in here so all of this is fused to 30 amp I know there's a whole bunch of protection built into the Moto Gadget and everything. I just, I, I thought, you know what, a 30 amp fuse is not a bad thing to have on, on the input there. Um, this is going to give me power to one of the, uh, so this is a dual fuse holder uh, and I can peel that piece of tape off. So one of the outputs on this guy is 15 amp fuse to the digital guard dog. This one is a two amp fuse and goes up to the run stop switch and back down to the digital guard dog. And that enables that, that input side of the digital guard dog. Wow, that was a mouthful a and then some. Um, like I say, any questions, let me know if you got any comments for me. If I have this all wrong, uh, certainly don't mind you telling me, uh, but I, th I think I've got it right. That's it for now. We'll talk soon. Going to get into the wiring here and uh, see how this thing works and flashes lights and does stuff like that. All right. See you soon. Thanks.